Hey, ka, good evening. Welcome to Thai PBS English News Service. Tonight, you with me, Rung Kip Chon Aparai. Tonight, many of us have been glued to our TV screens to cheer on two Thai weightlifters, Nong Tao Pim Siri Siri Gao and Nong Puk Luk Latikan Gunnoi, competed in the Women Olympic Weightlifting event starting at 9:30 p.m. Thai time. However, now that we have just known that um, Nong Tao Pim Siri has just won the first silver medal for Thailand. During the Women Olympic Weightlifting Competition, which has just ended tonight, Li Suying from China won the gold medal with the score of 246, and um, Nong Tao Pim Siri Siri Gao from Thailand has won the silver medal for Thailand. Of the two Thai women weightlifters, Nong Puk Luk Ratikan Kunnoi got the fourth place. We will get to know a little bit more about Nong Tao Pim Siri Siri Gao, who will bring Thailand the first silver medal. And if this is the first time the Olympic weightlifter is only 22 years old, and what she lacks in age, Nong Tao Pim Siri, she more than makes up for in strength and fierce determination. In her hometown in Khon Kan province, residents were proud, excited, and full of anticipation as they watched her compete in the Olympics in London live on TV. Neighbors prepared delicious Isan food and they've set up a giant screen at their local temple, Wat Po Thong, so the whole town could cheer on their young champion. Nong Tao Pim Sri won her first gold medal at the World Weightlifting Championships for Juveniles at the tender age of just 18. Last year, she won yet another gold medal at the 2011 Sea Games. At the London Games just now, Nong Tao Pim Sri won the first silver medal for Thailand. Her parents, friends, relatives and neighbors are always be proud of her for representing Thailand at this once-in-a-lifetime event. Aside from sports, the Olympics are also known as an opportunity for the many countries participating to showcase the finest cultural highlights. And one such is Ploy Thai Restaurant, a London-based Thai eatery which was chosen to provide Thai food for the Olympic Games. Here's more. Famous for its Dom Yam Gung and sweet green curry, Ploy Thai restaurant has had no shortage of culinary skills. It's no wonder they've been chosen to represent Thailand in the Olympic kitchen. Their menu of sweet and sour chicken, spring rolls and Thai curry is sure to leave mouths watering. But perhaps their most prominent dish is a vegetarian Pad Thai. <laughs> Here it is, vegetarian pad thai. We usually only have this at home during the vegetarian J festival. But here I go. I wonder what this London dish will taste like. I hope it tastes good. Mmm. Mmm. It tastes just like home. The flavors are no doubt Thai, but I have to ask, why does the Pad Thai have to be vegetarian? Vegetarian Pad Thai is one of our most popular dishes. It's very important that even vegetarians can enjoy Thai food without worrying about eating meat. Not to mention, it provides more variety for the menu. Because there's no cooking area at the sales booths, the cooks have to prepare the food in their own kitchen, then rush it over to the booth in just five minutes so that the food is still fresh and ready to eat. Even though the restaurant has had to close temporarily for this Olympic opportunity and had to invest an additional one and a half million pounds, or about 74 million baht, their money and effort has not been wasted. As soon as they opened, old and new customers began lining up for this ever-popular taste of Thailand. 
Well, that Pad Thai looks very yummy indeed. Well, before the Olympics began, the National Broadcasting and Telecommunication Commission, or NBTC, announced a must-carry rule which requires all free-to-air channels to broadcast their regular programs to avoid a recurrence of black screens. However, the Department of the Intellectual Property said that this regulation might result to compliance from foreign rights holders, especially those holding the rights for major sport tournaments. Earlier this month, the National Broadcasting and Telecommunications Commission, or NBTC, announced a must carry rule which mandates that all free-to-air channels must disseminate their signals to all households on both analog and satellite platforms without additional copyright charges. TV cable providers also have to ensure that their subscribers can view regular programs on free channels. However, Pachima Thanasanti, Director General of the Department of Intellectual Property, says that this regulation might violate the Copyright Act and result in litigation, both civil and criminal, by foreign rights holders who can seek damages. Pachima also expressed concern that the problem of blank screens and copyright violations could reoccur in the live broadcast of World Cup 2014, where RS is the rights holder for Thailand. The deputy president of the NBTC admitted that the must carry rule is a new thing and requires understanding. Still, this regulation will help protect consumers' basic rights to view programs on free TV. The NBTC will work in collaboration with the Department of Intellectual Property to find ways to forestall blank screens during the broadcast of World Cup 2014. Meanwhile, the Commission advised viewers who cannot watch the Olympics Games on free channels via satellite to replace their old set top boxes as the old ones cannot decode the signals. The NBTC has also requested that satellite TV operators change their set top boxes and affirm that it will ban the importation of devices that cannot receive the correct signals so that such problem will not occur again. Following the deaths of four Thai soldiers on Saturday, security authorities in Patani province are working hard on the investigation into the attack. Meanwhile, Duwa residents in Thanon sub-district of Mayor district in Patani province are asking for government to increase security and take serious action to end the violence in the deep south. After the insurgent attack on Saturday, which resulted in the death of four soldiers, another incident happened 200 meters from the police station in Bajor district of Naratiwa province. In this attack, explosives were placed in a shallow trench, and when they were detonated, a soldier who was on security duty was injured. At the border between Yarang district of Patani province and Mueang district of Yala province, another explosion caused injury to four front to a patrol policeman. Provincial police commander in Yala province said that this insurgent incident is similar to those on July 13th and may have been carried out by the same group. Meanwhile, the government announced the further tightening of security in the Deep South. Authorities in Patani province are trying to speed up the investigation of the incident in which four soldiers were shot to death. On Saturday, Duwa residents of Tenon sub-district in Mayor district of Patani province profoundly disagreed with such insurgent activity during the holy month of Ramadan. The four-day mobile cabinet meeting in Surin province um, today concluded today with a budget approval for state projects in the lower northeastern region as well as a decision to press ahead with the government's populist policies. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister Ying Lak Chinawat instructed the Deputy Prime Minister responsible for national security to engage and find a lasting solution to the chronic southern unrest. While at the mobile cabinet meeting in Surin province, Prime Minister Ying Lak Shinawat ordered Shalom Yu Bamrung and Deputy Prime Minister and Suranan Vecha Shiwa, Secretary General to the Prime Minister, to analyze the and construct protection measures against insurgents in the three 
In the three southernmost provinces, the Premier stressed the importance of expanding communication with the locals. The Cabinet also accepted that the proposal from the Southern Border Provinces Development Strate Strategy Committee on the adjustment of how the families of people who died or those who have been disabled as a result of the unrest are to be compensated. The Cabinet further approved nearly 400 million baht for the compensation fund. The Prime Minister also asked the responsible officials to foster understanding among locals regarding the demolition of resources that encroached upon Tapla National Park of Pajimri Province. The meeting discussed and agreed to extend the poor thai led government's first car program, but buyers have to purchase or book new vehicles before December. Furthermore, the cabinet approved 402 projects in eight lower northeastern provinces worth over 123 billion billion baht. This includes developing basic infrastructure, logistics, transportation, water management and tourism. Reports of new infections by hand, food and mouth disease have decreased, but schools and hosp hospitals are still being vigilant about disease awareness and cleaning habits. Vithya Bornasri, Minister of Public Health, had recently urged doctors, nurses and volunteers to spread the word about hand, foot and mouth disease around the country faster. These, travel, these traveling groups of educators teach people in hard to how to reach places about hand, foot and mouth disease, how to prevent it and what to do if infected. At the Thai, Cambodia and Thai Laos border, children are still being screened through. So far, all infected children seem to be suffering from the mild strain of disease, not, to, not the more severe kind. Meanwhile, in the Konrad Sima province, cleaning trucks are spraying schools to help kill any leftover virus in the area. Free disinfections are also being dis distributed on the streets in Mahasarakram province. Officials from the municipal government have been giving talks to teachers and school students about the epidemic. They are very concerned about older children in primary school as infected children from the age group seem to get sicker than other infected children. Hospitals in Sisiket province are screening all their child patients carefully after finding two infected children in their hospitals, but most of the preschools in the province had returned to normal. Finally, in that province, school officials are holding meetings to discuss the best ways of dealing with the epidemic. The province has already shut down at least two primary schools. Today, residents living in the riverside communities in the Philippines sought shelter after heavy rain from tropical storm in Sala hit the country. Here's more. The rains swelled rivers across the capital Manila, and the Marikina River was being closely monitored as the waters reached just 1.8 meters below the critical level of 18 meters above sea level. Families living along the Marikina River sought refuge in a basketball court. They brought their belongings since their homes were submerged in ankle-deep floodwaters. Town official Ferdi Felipe said they were preparing their contingency plans in case the flood levels continued to rise. He added that they had already advised the residents living by the river to get ready in case a mass evacuation is imposed. The town official said that around 400 homes were damaged and more than 2,400 people nationwide sought shelter in evacuation centers. However, so far no one has been reported injured. Corn vendor El Pido Espina, whose home was destroyed by the storm's effects, said that there were strong winds last night and he saw two barges being tossed around by the high waves and then they crashed into houses, destroying nearly a hundred homes. Tropical storm Sayola is expected to dump more heavy rain across the country, especially in the north, and the storm is moving at a speed of 11 kilometers per hour, with wind gusts of up to 135 kilometers per hour. Hugh Adams, Thai PBS. Thank you, Kun Hugh. We end tonight's news with an update on the weather. The monsoon threw across Myanmar, Laos and Upper Vietnam yield torrential rain with heavy downpours over several areas of Bangkok and another provinces. The Meteorological Department has confirmed that two tropical storms developing in the Pacific will not pass over Thailand, but we may feel some of the storm's indirect effects.
Powerful tropical storm Saola has developed east of the Philippines and is drifting north toward Taiwan and China. Meanwhile, another typhoon Danbury in the Pacific Ocean is moving westward to Japan. According to the meteorological department, Saola and Danbury are not the cause of the recent rainfall over Thailand. However, Professor Thanawajarupongsugun, a professor at the Faculty of Science Unit for Disaster and Land Information Studies, Chulalongkorn University, emphasized that these storms will have no direct effect to Thailand. The scientists added that normally from August to October, there is a high chance of storms developing in the east of Philippines and over the South China Sea before lashing Thailand. They might result in very heavy rainfall in the next three months and should be closely monitored. And that wraps up tonight's edition of Thai PBS English News Service. Thank you for watching. I'm Rung Thip Chonapalai. Sawadee Have a good night.